Hello again, and thank you very much for watching. And to anybody who's subscribed, thank you very much. Much appreciated. I hope you're enjoying the films I'm making. This is the second part of our journey from the Midlands down to London. We will be leaving Weedon Beck, which is where we stopped in the last film, the first in the series, and we will continuing to Gayton Junction and then onwards south to Blissworth Tunnel and through the tunnel to Stoke Bruin. I hope you enjoy the film, I hope you enjoy the scenery and you find it relaxing. Thank you very much for watching again, enjoy the film. So this is the map taken from Littleson's Waterways Guide 1, Grand Union, Oxford and the South East. This is the route that we're travelling in this film, down the Grand Union Canal, passing through places like Bugbrook, down to Gate and Junction, and then we will be continuing south through to Blissworth, that's Blissworth Tunnel with the yellow and the red dots and down to Stoke Bruin where there is the National Waterways Museum. It's a lovely sunny day again as we head south on our journey towards London. We are just coming to the outskirts of Weedon Beck. I think about the men who dug the canal. This is quite, a, quite an embankment here and you think that it was all built by men pushing wheelbarrows full of earth up the hill to make an, the embankment. Weedon Wharf is the last point as we turn left out of Weedon Beck. There's a train disappearing into a tunnel. The canal will take the longer route going round the hills rather than through them at this point. Another surprise really was the water tap that's coming up on the left. We seem to be out in the countryside, no buildings nearby and here is a water tap. It's a lovely place to fill up with water. As we continue we are going towards Stowe Hill Bridge. This is Stowe Hill Bridge. So just passing underneath Stowe Hill Bridge, Rugby Boat Sales, which is another narrowboat and Y-beam brokerage business, is just on the right hand side here, with a crane to lift boats out. And coming up is, on the right hand side, is the Stowe Hill Workshop. That's an aluminium boat, it's a, a sea otter, it's the little one there that's out of the water. 
Stowe Hill Marina. Canal here was really so peaceful, wide, green with the overhanging trees. On the right hand side are a few lovely houses right by the canal side. There's another one or two just coming up now just on the right hand side after we pass through the bridge. mind if I had a caravan staying on that campsite that's a nice location as well and another small marina here just with moorings uh, on the canal itself You can pay a lot of money to have uh, a full narrowboat repaint. I stand to be corrected on this one, but I think the current uh, price is round about £10,000 to have your, your narrowboat repainted. An old well working boat or two there that have seen better days. And I dare say the water must be fa fairly unpolluted if those are water lilies, but I'm not sure on that one. I've n never travelled down this way before. This is uh, a journey that is totally new to us. This is an interesting boat on the right here. It looks as though it was a fiberglass boat and somebody's put an extension on it um, rather to create more space. There's the railway line again. It uh, tended to run alongside the canal for quite some time. Now we're just passing Hayford Marina shortly. This is it now. There's some boats out of the water here, high up on the bank. So this is Hayford Marina. Again, I think they do boat repairs and possibly boat building here. Sorry, Hayford Fields Marina. I presume the windsock is um, to help people trying to moor the boat up in the marina. It can be a bit awkward trying to navigate in a marina amongst other boats when it's windy. Unless, of course, it's a windsock because somebody in the area has got a helicopter or a plane or something like that. You never know. So is this, this is uh, Bug Brook Wharf. Bridge 36 on the Grand Union Canal. We've just gone through.
and another marina which I think is Bug Brook Marina. Another interesting boat here on the left. As I said in my uh, previous video on our journey towards London, you do get some interesting boats on this trip. And if you're an admirer of trains, you get to see trains quite a bit as well. This journey we're doing, you know, on a train, it would only take a couple of hours to get to London. But we shall be going the slow route on the Grand Union Canal and in our case it's going to take us over 30 days beautiful countryside and to think that this Grand Union Canal in its day was the M1 motorway the direct route from Birmingham down to London that's an old Bantam tug I think So we've stopped for the night. We are just before Gayton Junction. So that's the end of uh, day three. You can put the lights on for the tunnel if you like. If you like at the front, you don't need them all on. So my wife's just been uh, discussing about having the lights on for Blissworth Tunnel. Besides having the bow main light on, looking forwards, the headlight, we also tend to put some of the in inside lights on as well. This is Gayton Junction, so on the left is the branch of the Grand Union Canal going off to Northampton down a flight of narrow locks. So that's looking down the branch now. That's looking back where we came. This is a, a wide beam charity boat that uh, runs out of Blissworth Marina giving trips to disabled people, I think. So we're heading on our way to uh, Blissworth Tunnel. Blissworth Marina again. line just going across the uh, canal I think interesting bridge built with concrete and um, steel and another lovely uh, bungalow right by the canal side and another lovely X uh, pair of working boats in British Waterways colours. Canal's becoming a bit uh, more narrow here.
sure if that sign was about the high speed rail or not. So this is Blissworth, just passing Blissworth Mill. So oh, there's another boat yard here as well. And the canal's also becoming a bit more overgrown as we head towards Blissworth Tunnel. And we're kind of entering a, a cutting now with the tunnel about to come up in front of us. Tunnel's just round the bend here. On the left hand side is a kind of legger's hut. In the days before boats had engines, horses would go over the top of the hill and you would employ leggers to leg the boat through Blissworth Tunnel. I stopped on the left. One thing I wanted to do was to change the uh, exhaust chimneys of the boat because I wasn't too sure whether the one that was on would be too tall in places because tunnels can vary a little bit in height so that's looking at the entrance again and uh, Blissworth Tunnel Hut where leggers would have been based This is two-way traffic if you're a narrow boat. If you're a wide beam then you have to book a passage. But two narrow boats can pass in this tunnel. There's always this kind of point as you enter the tunnel where you kind of can't see much until your eyes become accustomed to the darkness. one of the shafts that was dug in order to build the tunnel. This is a precast concrete ring. In the early 1980s the tunnel required a lot of renovation works and the precast concrete replaced the lining in quite a bit of the tunnel. At 3,057 yards long Blissworth is the third longest canal tunnel open to navigation in Britain. It was originally opened on the 25th of March 1805. As we approach Stoke Bruin and the National Waterways Museum, we are going to moor up for lunch. This will be the end of this video and I would just like to say cheerio hope to see you again in part three thank you very much for watching thank you very much for subscribing please take care thank you very much cheerio